What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Johnners. This is episode 88, and this is the last official episode of Wrestling Johnners in 2019. I'll explain more about uh, this one extra episode that we drop in after Christmas, but I'll explain more about that very, very soon. And I've got uh, Dits from Dits on Wrestling on the line. So, uh, Dits, uh, good evening. Um, how are you, my friend? And uh, thanks for joining us on this special occasion. I'm fantastic, and even better that you asked me, of all people, to come on and co-host this prestigious award show. Very indeed, happy. Indeed, indeed. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, to fill in our, our listeners, if, if I've not explained myself fully, but of course, if you aren't listening to this, this is our special end of year awards, uh, where we're going to be covering all sorts of uh, pro wrestling categories to find out who's the best, uh, who's nominated. Um, and uh, we're also going to be covering some special end of decade awards as well. So we've got quite a few to get through. So we'll crack on with those very, very soon. But uh, uh, did, um how are you? The last time we spoke to you, the last time we had you on the podcast, uh, we were covering hell in a cell now it was literally hell going through that pay-per-view especially <laughs> that bizarre main event uh like i said we've, we've been keeping in touch uh, through uh, dms and uh, twitter and all that but uh, what you've been up to lately i know that um you've been doing a lot of, of podcasting you've got your dits on wrestling podcast your draft app podcast and you're very active on twitter so uh, uh you've been a very busy boy tell us about some of your recent movements on on social media and on uh, podcasting my friend yeah, so uh, podcasting wise, um, I'm just I mean, I'm done for the year now, and maybe the first couple of weeks in January. Podcasting burnout is a real thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure any podcaster listening to this, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Um, so I, I did my end of year awards myself uh, last week, um, the Whammy Awards. So got those out of the way. So go and check that out. It's a good um, yeah, it is. It's, yeah. I, I enjoyed actually editing. It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, I actually thought it was. I was. I was actually. If I laugh at my own stuff, I know it's good. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed doing it. And Anthony, who's uh, my first mate on the podcast, uh, we had a lot, we had a lot of fun throwing together this, that Whammy Awards. It was great. So that was that's my final episode for what will probably be the next three, maybe four weeks. Um, I do have YouTube stuff um, going on though, so um, yeah, I've done a. It's on YouTube. I, I do. Yeah. It's on YouTube. Yes, yeah, so I've got WrestleCrate reviews. Um, I'm going to be doing some gaming stuff in the next couple of uh, maybe week or two. I've got a couple of unreleased stuff as well that I'm going to get out there. Um, so that's going to be my my place to go because it's it's fresh and it's new. It's not podcasting. It's like video um, creation. It's 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 a little bit of a spin. I'm actually really enjoying doing it. Um, so I'm going to be getting into all of that. Uh, but Twitter, again, taking a break from Twitter, apart from, you know, the odd retweets of, you know, people stuff who tag me in them. Um, and um, I'm just going to be doing promo tweets as well. If, so if I've got if I do something on YouTube, I'll use Twitter as my promotional tool. But apart from that, I'll have zero interaction with absolutely anybody over the festive period because I just want to focus on family and just it's just having a break for Twitter. Twitter is. Yeah negative at the moment i'm i'm sick of seeing just negativity all the time just people dragging everybody down so it's just nice to step back i've been away from it for about a week now and it's it feels good you've had a bit of twitter detox you uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um and uh you, you don't do facebook yet do you? you you've probably got a personal page but you don't have a, a dits on wrestling facebook page is that something we can look forward to in the new year maybe uh no no oh. i i hate <laughs> facebook i detest it i personal page i think i'm coming into my second year without it got i didn't get rid of it my page is still there i just don't touch it don't look at it don't have the app on my phone don't have any of that i did try and put a dits on wrestling group page together and i think my spreaker automatically posts episodes to it so you can go on facebook and you can find the dits on wrestling page but and my dits episodes won't be there. Are on there but i won't be there <laughs> the light <laughs> the lights, the lights on, but on, nobody's home. Nobody's home. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a home. Um, but just, just, to, just to fill in my listeners on a, a few episodes that I do have coming up very, very soon. I, I kind of alluded to at the very beginning of the episode that this was kind of my last official episode of 2019. It kind of is. Um, I, I've just recorded uh, an interview with Coastal Championship wrestler over in uh, Coastal Championship wrestling in Florida, um, and a wrestler by the name of Cha Cha Charlie. And that special interview will be dropping on uh, December the 26th. So boxing day that'd be my kind of special christmas week episode just to kind of fill in the blanks fill in the gaps uh from when i won't be recording and then my next 
podcast after that will be another interview um, with uh, Rise Underground champion, hardcore legends, UK independent uh, wrestling legends, Big Effing Joe. I'll be interviewing Big Effing Joe on the 2nd of January, and uh, that will be dropping that same day. And then on the 5th of January, I'll be recording back-to-back episodes covering day one and day two of Wrestle Kingdom 14. So lots to look forward to on the Wrestling With Jonas podcast. And uh, I think I could do with a couple of weeks break over Christmas just to <laughs> kind of gear myself up for all the, the big episodes that I'll be recording very, very soon. But listen out for the Cha Cha Charlie interview. It's very, very good. Highly entertaining. That'll be dropping on December the 26th, Boxing Day, of course. So, Dits, um, the, the awards, um, I, I build them as the, the biggest and the best pro wrestling awards. Now, I was inspired to do these awards because uh, I don't know about yourself, but I was a big um, a wrestling magazine collector uh, back in the day. And I was a big fan of Power Slam magazine. Are you familiar with Power Slam or did you ever collect any copies? Uh, but to every year, I think they ran from uh, 1992 through to 2015. 14 so a long long run and uh, every year they would do their own end of year uh, awards and uh, the, the, their readers would send in uh, nominations for who should win certain categories i was inspired by that i did something very very similar in uh, about 12 months ago um, but i thought I'd, I'd go one better and one bigger for this year so this this brace yourself there's 25 categories but uh, we had quite a bit of interest and there was uh, yeah looks like quite a few people got in touch and filled in the survey and uh, put through their nominations for the various categories and uh, yeah just wanted to thank everybody that did kind of reach out uh, to the survey fill it in um, it must have taken some people well, a little bit of time to fill in the nominations i know dits you were one of the first people to fill it out um, oh, yes. I, <laughs> you you had to put an entire weekend aside to fill out the survey <laughs> i know um but let's go into the first category and the first category is breakout star of the year or newcomer of the year and uh, uh, these people didn't win but they were nominated so uh, a notable mention certainly were MJF in this uh, category private party Jordan Devlin got a few mentions there Sammy Guevara but there was three winners three individuals that uh, all came top that all uh, got the, the same number of votes um, ahead of all the others and uh, the three winners of our breakout star of the year I'd love to have some sort of uh, drum roll uh, kind of uh, sound effect here. I may add it in afterwards dits, but I've come under prepared. I should really have downloaded a, a sound effect app or something, but I'm sure we've got plenty of those around. But uh, the three winners of Breakout Star of the Year, you've got Rhea Ripley, Keith Lee and Darby Allen. So three very deserving winners and uh, Keith Lee has certainly come into his own over the last couple of months. Rhea Ripley is having the time of her life and we'll talk more about Rhea Ripley a bit later on and Darby Allen certainly making a big name for himself in AEW. Any thoughts on, uh, on those three Three winners, uh, Rhea Ripley, Keith Lee and Darby Allen. Big fans of some of those, I'm sure. Oh, all three of them, absolute. Um, I, 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 I'm not surprised people have gone for these three. Um, I, I, each one of them would be deserving on their in, the, like in their own right. Rhea mm-hmm. Ripley's done really well over the last maybe two, two years now. I think she's been with WWE. Of course, she was the inaugural NXT UK Women's Champion. So yeah. you could say she's already broken out there. But this year, she's taken that and just flown like she's been rocket strapped um of Take course, her you know. all game survivor series she just blew the yeah out, didn't she had a hell yeah. of a, a couple of weeks there but uh yeah, definitely. And then say Darby Allen's uh, really making a name for himself in AEW. And we know what a, a megastar Keith Lee is kind of uh, going to be in 2020. He's had a fantastic 2019. And uh, I think he's going to do some big things next year. But uh, let's have a quick look at the second uh, second category, the second award up for grabs. And it was the announcer of the year for 2019. So notable mentions. Once again, these didn't win, but they were nominated. Uh, the fantastic Nigel McGuinness, of course. Corey Graves, Excalibur from AEW. Tom Phillips and Vic Joseph but the winner and there can only be one w- winner really I think he got uh, more than half of all the votes uh, for announcer of the year and it's Mauro Ronaldo so yeah. Mauro Ronaldo's had a, a, a funny couple of months I know that he took a bit of time off but congratulations Mauro um, but uh, I think we'll both agree that uh, hands down he's definitely the best announcer out there uh, would you agree Dits? Uh, for me I love Mauro Ronaldo I think he's yeah. fantastic but I can I do understand where people come from when they're so divisive about his style, like because he's very, he's very shouty, he's very out there. Like it's his personality when he's on the mic, it just shines straight through, you know. And some some people just don't quite get it, and I can completely see why. Like some listening to him on commentary can be quite <laughs> stressful sometimes, but 
I love it. I think he, with NXT, he just, if he wasn't there, I feel it wouldn't be elevated as much. Like, he is the voice of NXT, and some of the, like, the, the biggest moments that we've all enjoyed with NXT have been kind of, like, ex- just an exclamation point slapped on them through Ronaldo's commentary. Like, his, it's just expressiveness of every single moment. I, I, I love it. It's an absolute joy for me, but... Um, I'm yeah, Mauro Ronaldo would be my top. In fact, I voted for Mauro Ronaldo, so I'm happy that he's won the award. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, award number three, so faction stable of the year. So notable mentions, uh, you had the Jurassic Express, that's uh, uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy and Marco Stunt, of course. Uh, the Elite, uh, the Elite, uh, say, uh, they're now head on chosen their own promotion, AEW, of course. Um, and the Inner Circle were also nominated, but the winners. And uh, this wouldn't be much of a surprise to many of you out there, but the Undisputed Era was the winners for yes. Faction Stable of the Year. Uh, boom, you could say. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they've had a fantastic year. Now they're all draped in gold. Uh, of course, Roger Strong is a North American champion. You've got uh, Kyler Riley, Bobby Fish as the tag team champions in NXT. And, of course, Adam Cole Bay Bay is the NXT <coughs> champion. So, uh, yeah, well, much deserved. Um, I think they've had a fantastic year. That They've probably had... Um, their best year most definitely and uh, the best year of any faction out there so very much deserved bit of a given that one but uh, our final award for uh, for this little section then dits is gimmick of the year mm. so uh, some of the gimmicks that were mentioned uh, luchasaurus we've just mentioned him of course the viking raiders very popular with uh, with many um the planet champion daniel bryan so when he was the planet champion that was a very entertaining gimmick Love that. Uh, where he really portrayed a fantastic heel there and uh, he really knocked it out of the park with that one and uh, Cara Noir, now of course a very uh, popular UK indie worker um, and uh, apparently he was so violent he got kicked out of the Royal Ballet and became a professional wrestler. I don't know if, if that's uh, kind of something that happened uh, for real or whether that's just uh, kind of a, a gimmick behind his character but um, there we go. But the, the winner of uh, Best Gimmick for 2019 and uh, probably won't surprise many, but it's The Fiends. And of course, we were introduced to The Fiends in about May when uh, the Firefly Funhouse first hit our screens and uh, The Fiend was slowly introduced into those vignettes, into them segments. And uh, since then, he, he's made his debut, become Universal Champion and has been one of the more uh, captivating characters on WWE TV this year, um, where WWE TV probably hasn't been at its very best. The Fiend has been one of the highlights. And uh, I know you cover Raw and Smackdown quite a bit that's uh, your your thoughts on the themes and uh, his character and his kind of journey through 2019 massive fan absolutely mm. massive fan it was it was one of those things I'd um, just started coming back into wrestling like watch I mean I, I was aware of what was going on but actually watching it consistently um, kind of married up to the time that Bray came in with the fun house not necessarily I think it was the build up to it so he had like the creepy um, puppets and all that kind of stuff right. and then and then all of a sudden this firefly fun house came out of nowhere and i remember watching it in my car before i went to work i was i was sat in the car park and i was like huh what the hell <laughs> is this and I, I must have watched it about four or five times just trying to get my head around it but i loved it i absolutely loved it and that just kept growing and growing and growing and growing um, and then, of course, The Fiend then became a huge part of it still is yeah. um it had its rocky patch it had its rocky patch, you know. We covered it when we did Hell in a Cell together. Oh, tell me about it. Um, but I think he's now recovered. I like the fact that we now have had the the Bray Wyatt Funhouse character wrestle now um, at TLC. So that's good. We've got on that that other little um, side of things going on now. So I'm I've loved the gimmick, and there is absolutely no other gimmick on this planet in wrestling that could even touch the Fiend. Just on any everything, character development. Um, impact just, just absolutely any category you can think of the fiend is likely on top of it it's been a hell of a ride and 2020 will be exciting mm, be interesting to see uh who he feuds with in 2020 it looks uh, by the looks of it, if you saw trc bits it looks like he's gonna um have a bit of an extended feud with uh, with daniel bryan yes uh, with the buzz cut daniel bryan of course um but uh, yeah that'll be interesting to see where that takes us and who he might face either at Royal Rumble or possibly, dare I say it, looking a bit further ahead at WrestleMania. But uh, let's have a little look at uh, AEW. So well, I've got some some highlights here uh, that we're going to talk about. So this week's, uh, one of the, the, the feature matches in this week's uh, AEW Dynamite, of course, um, was... 
uh, was Jungle Boy um, versus uh, versus Chris Jericho. Now we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on. Uh, but the the opening match of this week's AEW Dynamite um, was a, a tag match. Now it was the Lucha Brothers versus the Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega. So in a, it it was in a bid to combat the opening match on NXT, which of course was the NXT Championship match. Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. So the crowd for this match, Lucha Brothers versus Hangman Adam Page and uh, Kenny Omega, was red red hot uh this had a real pay-per-view level feel to it to be honest with you uh this was quite a physical and intense match between these four amazing wrestlers the end of the match came however when adam page nailed his own partner kenny omega with his buckshot lariat and then the lucha brothers took advantage of this and they put omega away with their, their spiked pile driver uh for the pinfall victory so uh there was definitely some tension at the end of the match between adam page and kenny omega it was a bit of a shoving match between the two of them um however back in a backstage segment adam page actually came to the aid came to the rescue of kenny omega when he was being attacked backstage by the lucha brothers and uh kenny omega was, was kind of searching for and looking for pack who's always been a, a bit of a long time foe so quite a few kind of storyline threads going on here but uh, i was quite intrigued by the the adam page development and possibly threads of maybe an Adam Page heel turn. But uh, uh, any thoughts on this one? I mean, th there's been some hints leading to, you know, possibly Adam Page turn into more of a, a darker Adam Page, especially he has lost a few matches in, in AEW and he's looking for that kind of spark um, to, to kind of revitalize his career, I suppose. Uh, losing another match here alongside Kenny Omega couldn't have done his confidence any good um, but uh, nailing his own partner uh, was definitely not good for relations here but uh, any thoughts on, on, on this match and uh, what's going on uh, with, with this storyline? Well, I'm about three weeks behind when it comes to AEW and I don't, I don't know what it is I don't, think, I don't know if it's because I don't have the time to watch it or it's a case of I'm just not into it I haven't quite figured that out yet so I'm going to try and catch up with it but Having said that, just based on what you just said, I would love to see Hangman Page kind of move away from, you know, the face dynamic and mm. become that darker kind of thing. I think that would elevate him He needs a lot. something. He needs something. That yeah. spark just to kind of change fortunes, I reckon. But, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, but it, it looks like there could be a little bit of a... You know, possibly a, a slow burn towards a, a feud with Kenny Omega and Adam Page there, but uh, Kenny Omega has his hands full with Pack by the looks of things. But uh, then we round off the first hour of Dynamite this week with uh, the aforementioned Jungle Boy versus Chris Jericho. Now, of course, uh, Chris Jericho challenged Jungle Boy a few weeks ago, and he kind of challenged Jungle Boy to say that he Jungle Boy couldn't last. 10 minutes with Le Champion, Chris Jericho in a match. And uh, remember, the Jungle Boy only has 10 minutes to prove that he can hang with the AEW World Champion. And this is a non-title match. A lot of people kind of got up on their high horse thinking, well, Jungle Boy's uh, not won a single match in AEW. How could he possibly uh, be afforded a, a World Championship match? But it, they made it clear very, very quickly through social media that it was a non-title match. And throughout this match, Jericho uh, um, he overshadows uh, Jungle Boy in many ways during this match, including size. Uh, Jungle Boy is quite a, a shorter, smaller wrestler than Chris Jericho. And he, Jericho tries to humiliate the Jungle Boy uh, throughout this match. Uh, and as the clock ticks down, uh, Jungle Boy get, gets a two count with a lion salt, which, of course, is taking a page out of Chris Jericho's playbook. Uh, with uh, one minute to go, uh, Jericho slaps on the walls of Jericho onto Jungle Boy, with Jungle Boy refusing to give up even even as Jericho cranks back on the move and the clock ticks down to zero uh, with Jungle Boy still refusing to give up inside the 10 minutes. Jericho then gets on the mic and demands another five minutes, which they, they do grant. Uh, but uh, after the Jungle Boy gets a couple of close near falls on Jericho, Le Champion, he just gets out of the ring and uh, storms backstage. We do eventually see Chris Jericho come back out. He throws a little bit of a, uh, a, a fit around, around the ring, throwing chairs and uh, kicking the ring and uh, losing his temper. But then he gets back on the microphone and uh, he, 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 he kind of... Uh, brings back a storyline that was uh, first brought to pass last week where he invited John Moxley into the inner circle and he kind of uh, re-invites John Moxley and kind of extends the invite further to John Moxley and uh, we did see last week John Moxley kind of walking off with an AEW with, a, with an inner circle t-shirt draped over his shoulder and uh, a lot of question marks kind of hanging over whether he will or won't sign with uh, the inner circle but uh, it's almost inevitably leading between uh, a match between Moxley and Omega I'm sure 
but he's, I mean, Jericho has been an absolute revelation in AEW Dits, and I know you're a few weeks behind, um, but I think everything Jericho has touched in AEW has turned to gold. And, and one thing that I really loved about uh, his match with Jungle Boy is he have essentially been in the ring with Jungle Boy. He's created a new star, and uh, he's really helped elevate the Jungle Boy. And uh, like I say, it looks like you know there's still this thread of, of whether Moxley will or won't potentially join the inner circle. But uh, any thoughts on this uh, segment that went down on Wednesday in Dits? I mean, I love the fact that, I mean, you just describing it to me then, like, it sounds like it was a, a really good segment. Um, and you're right, Jericho, when I look on social media and I'm trying to kind of see what's going on with AEW without actually watching it, Jericho seems to be the guy who is always um, in everybody, or just across my timeline all the time. Yes. Like, I'll look and I go, right, oh, Jericho segment. I know what Jericho did this week. Um, he... I'd, I'd, I'd be curious to see where AEW would be without Jericho. I know because... that he, spike, he spikes the ratings whenever he's on the screen. I know that uh, people do tune in to watch him, so it, it definitely helps the overall the overall numbers. I would say. Um, but it's it's yeah, it's like you said, like he's he's elevated Jungle Boy, you know, kind of made a star out of him. Mm. Um, I'm a, I mean, did it go to no contest in the end, or was it, it, it uh, well in the, in the end? Yeah, I, I suppose uh, Jungle Boy. He lasted the 10 minutes. There wasn't a, a pinfall or a submission, so you could say it was a, a no contest. I mean, if I mean, if it ends up being a count out with Jericho storming off, you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's still a W over the AEW World Champion. It Indeed. still goes on his record because, I, you know, I've seen that AEW is still doing the whole, you know, wins-loss thing, which I think is personally fantastic. I love that. Yeah. Um, that's what that's what's needed. You know, we need moments like this in I mean, WWE should, you know, pay attention to this because moments like this is what builds future stars like Jungle Boy, you know, going the distance with Chris Jericho, who's everyone's gonna talk about Jungle Boy now. Everyone who's everyone who watches AEW is gonna know who Jungle Boy is, and even people outside of that AEW bubble are gonna know who Jungle Boy is. So it's stuff that's like it. that that you know WWE need to kind of Take notice of that a little bit because it's been that regular complaint over so many years that their failure to make new stars. And it seems that AEW, from what you've just said, have just done it in the, in the space of one match. Yeah, he did it in the space of 10 minutes, absolutely. But uh, and, and, and Jericho, like I say, everything he touches just turned into gold and uh, I love everything he's doing. I, I love this incarnation of Chris Jericho. Um, but uh, yeah. There we go. Let's move on to some more awards then, Dit. So we're in the promotion of the year, in the promotion of 2019. Uh, some of the other promotions that were nominated. I don't know whether these could officially be classed as indie, but uh, I'll mention them anyway. Uh, NWA. And we have had a big resurgence this year with NWA Power on, on YouTube, of course. Impact Wrestling, um, AAW, which is another indie promotion from the States. Destiny Wrestling, uh, TNT, which I think are, they're based in Liverpool. Uh, Beyond Wrestling, another American promotion. And IWE UK, that's uh, an Essex-based promotion who I occasionally do interviews with. Uh, but the indie promotion of the year through the, the votes, uh, through the Wrestling with Jonas survey, was Progress Wrestling. Now, I'm representing in progress with my progress t-shirt so big fan of progress i've seen a couple of their shows this year so uh, really happy for progress there um and uh kind of linked in with that we've got indie wrestler of the year some of the uh, nominations were uh, orange cassidy eddie ryan i think you're wearing an eddie ryan uh, baseball cap there so representing uh the the plymouth uh, faithful he is from plymouth isn't he he is indeed there we go uh james storm uh, damien dunn uh, obviously brother of uh, Pete Dunn, uh, Jordine Grace, uh, Filthy Tom Lawler and uh, Marty Scurll. And Will Ospreay has been nominated as well. But uh, indie wrestler of 2019 is David Starr. So David Starr's had a fantastic year. Um, he is Mr. Independent. And uh, yes, he very nearly clinched the Progress World Championship at the back end of the summer. Uh, wasn't quite able to. I think he's got his eyes set on the Progress title in 2020. But congratulations to David Starr. Uh, let's have a look at uh, angle and storyline of the year so angle slash storyline for 2019 notable mentions were the the introduction of the fiend and the firefly funhouse we mentioned uh, how uh, that's been one of the highlights of many people's years in uh, 2019 uh, the 
Cody Rhodes and the MJF storyline uh, was uh, nominated by some of our listeners as well. Uh, the Jericho and Cody Rhodes uh, build to their full gear match. That was also nominated. And of course, Finn Balor's heel turn. Uh, but uh, we have double winners. And uh, the winner of storyline or angle of the year was, uh, first of all, uh, NXT's invasion of SmackDown uh, from uh, November. I think it was just when they uh, were, were stranded over in Saudi Arabia. The, and uh, whatever happened there, still haven't quite got to the bottom of that. But I think that was straight off the heels of Hell in a Cell. Um, and then the, the, the double winner, the second half of the double winner was, of course, um, Kofi Mania. So Kofi Kingston and uh, the journey uh, from Elimination Chamber all the way through to um, being successful, winning the world title, winning the WWE Championship against Daniel Bryan in that tremendous match. And then the build all the way through to WrestleMania uh, for Kofi Kingston. So congratulations to Kofi Kingston. Uh, any thoughts on the kind of NXT invasion of SmackDown and kind of speed? headed the, the run to Survivor Series and of course Kofi Mania that captivated us all uh, back in the early part of the year that's I mean with Kofi Mania that storyline I believe uh, me and Anthony on my Whammy Awards gave that storyline a year so that's no right. surprise to see it um, joint winner here today but it's it's nice to see the NXT invasion thrown in there because even though it it was you know maybe an accident you know we don't know if this was planned from the beginning where we always going to have you know nxt you know full on that for that first smackdown just get straight into it we uh, we're never going to know i don't think we're ever going to know uh, maybe it would have been a slower burn um, without the saudi stuff that went on but nxt takeover smackdown was amazing it was the best it might still to this day is my favorite smackdown episode from uh, their fox um partnership like I, yeah. just yeah. everything about it and i think it's the fact that nxt were never made to look weak i don't remember a time when nxt were made to look weak and to have this third brand there's it's never really been seen as that third brand it's always been seen as developmental but for people who follow nxt um like we do um we've always i think we've always viewed it as the third brand the ma- the biggest competition to the main roster like um, so to actually see them portrayed as such, you know, amongst the casual audiences, amongst the main roster, you know, fan base was tremendous. Like it was so good to see NXT represented so, so well. Um, and, you know, especially going into Survivor Series as well, just winning Survivor Series, essentially. You know, for, yeah, um, it was, it wins, was great. Definitely. I, I loved it. I loved it. every every it's one of those things. Like, I don't know about you, but. The brawls that you get with WWE, I'm bored of them. I'm sick and tired of them. They, I, they're, they're, it's, it's rinse and repeat. You know, you get two guys fighting, pulled apart. One will jump, pulled apart. The other will jump, pulled apart, and it will continue. And maybe they'll go backstage and they'll carry on backstage, pulled apart. And it's rinse and repeat. It's it's shit. <laughs> I I don't like it. But every single brawl in this NXT invasion, not one of them I didn't like, and that says a lot because it. Everything felt fresh. We were seeing like like little mini moments between every single brawl. Like we had Braun Strowman and Keith Lee having their little face off on Raw. I think it was like that was a little cool moment. And it's just little bit you know, like people that never interact with each other suddenly interacting. Like it was so much fun. I loved it. But it's exactly what you said. It felt fresh, and uh, it looks like quite often we're, we're complaining about Raw and SmackDown feeling stale. Um, it was a breath of fresh air, and it, it was good to see the NXT. Um, yeah, they kind of they made Raw and SmackDown look good for a period of time in the build-up to Survivor Series, and uh, I'm all for that. But uh, then we got worst wrestler of 2019. So oh. some of the the wrestlers that were to, that, that were nominated but didn't win, although they can still class themselves as uh, pretty poor in some people's books. I'm sure we had Cody was mentioned. Uh, as a worst wrestler of the year, Mike Kanellis, Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins, uh, Becky Lynch. And uh, uh, Becky is a, a divisive character. She's probably not the smoothest wrestler in the ring, but definitely very, very popular. Uh, Bray Wyatt was nominated as well. Um, but the winner of worst wrestler for 2019 dits was Baron Corbin. So, uh, how do uh-huh. you feel about this one? I mean, I, I personally like Baron Corbin's heel character. Um, I think if he, you know, if he makes you kind of feel angry at what he's doing, then, then he's doing the right thing. But uh, some people say he's got go away heat. I think he's got better as a wrestler and better as a heel as the year as the year has developed. Um, but uh, uh, yes, worst wrestler of the year, Baron Corbin. I mean, for starters, there. I mean, there were some names in those like nominations there that. Whoa, like yeah. Seth, I mean, Seth is 
annoying. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but he's still a good wrestler. Brock Lesnar is capable of putting on good matches. And Cody was in year. there. That's it. Cody, I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, but some of my listeners are picky, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but with um, with Baron Corbin, like I'm, I'm the same as you. Like I love his heel character. I I can see past you know, the, the so-called go away heat. Like for me, he's do he's a heel and he's doing his job. Like I, everyone hates to see him. He's doing his job. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I have nothing against Baron Corbin. I think his move set is cool as hell. Like I, the deep six end of days oh, and yeah. um, that thing where he slides out of the ring back in clothesline. I, I, I think Baron Corbin's great. Is, is he the best wrestler in the world? Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. But, you, I, I always, well, anytime this conversation's come up in the last month or two with, when it comes to Baron Corbin, I always direct people back to that King of the Ring final, Baron Corbin versus Chad Gable. Yeah. And what an absolutely incredible match. match that was. You take Baron Corbin away from the mainstay guys. So, your Seth Rollins, I mean, we know their little feud was not great. Roman Reigns, like right now, that I think their TLC match stunk up the joint. I didn't enjoy it. Um, you, you take him away from people like that and put him with guys like Chad Gable, maybe put him with Ali, guys of that caliber. I think that's where Corbin shines. So if you put him, if you start putting him in feuds with guys like that, I think people start to warm to Corbin a lot more. But I'm a Corbin fan, so worst wrestler of the year, get out of here. Well, I, I've always been a, fa a fan of the heels, and I must admit, I do like it when he heals it up. I do like his heel persona. I think he delivers on that front. And like I say, he's got some good moves. Uh, you know, he's, he's quite a, an agile big guy. Um, but uh, I think people don't like him because uh, because he wrestled Kurt Angle at WrestleMania. And he's, he's been involved in some featured feuds and featured matches uh, throughout various pay-per-views in 2019. I think people just don't like him because, uh, I don't know, maybe they feel he doesn't deserve his spots. But I think he's delivering uh, on many fronts. So, um, yes, uh, worst wrestler of the year, maybe not. But uh, that's what uh, the listeners wrestled, wrestling with John thought. But um, then we've got two categories that... Um, Give us a similar answer. Biggest letdown match of 2019. Uh, I'm not going to read out the nominations. It was, of course, the Hell in a Cell main event that we covered a couple of months back. It, it definitely was the biggest letdown match. I think that we were looking forward to that. We were intrigued in what we were going to see uh, with the Fiends being involved in his first championship match. And uh, the, the match as a whole and the way it ended was, was just awful. Uh, let's be honest. And... Uh, Hell in a Cell as a whole also won worst pay-per-view, worst show of 2019 as well. So Hell in a Cell, I think uh, it's, it's not going to get many repeat views on the WWE Network and uh, <laughs> people aren't going back to watch this one because it, you said it right, it stunk up the joint. It wasn't a great pay-per-view and that main event really put uh, quite a stinky exclamation point on that show. Uh, I'm trying, this is, this is, there's so much stuff that wwe does i'm trying to actually think back if there was actually a worse pay-per-view and mm, nothing actually springs to mind so i mm. guess Hel hell in a cell is the easy one to go to because of how the main event went but i'm pretty sure yeah. there were some decent matches in that pay-per-view becky, becky was. sasha was great yeah. um there was probably some other decent stuff but yeah the becky sasha hell in a cell match was was pretty awesome i think that opened the show actually and uh, yeah. yeah i enjoyed that match definitely very good um but uh i think that that's uh, a main event has left a bad taste in people's mouths um, not just about that match but about the show as a whole and i think that's going to be their last in memory the, the first time we saw the red ring of course and uh, i think that's kind of people's uh, you know, defining memory of that show, unfortunately. So, uh, as good as the other matches were, um, I think that main event has left a bit of a stain on the show as a whole. And obviously, uh, with it coming out as worst show of the year. <laughs> so, let, let's just uh, cap off uh, AEW before we move on to some more awards. Then, so uh, we're, we're looking at our main event now, and of course, it's SCU putting their AEW Tag Team Championships on the line against the Young Bucks. Um, there are some pretty impressive tag team action for both teams, as you would expect. Uh, with the champions SCU retaining after hitting Matt Jackson with their SCU later, getting the pinfall victory. After the match, uh, the Dark Order 
who are like the the new kind of uh, well dark and mysterious heel faction that's um, uh, getting some steam in AEW. They, they they then came down with all their minions um, and they 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 put the beat down on uh, the Bucks and SEU. Even Kenny Omega came down. He got a bit, a bit of a beat down and the show closed with the Dark Order and their minions standing tall above the fallen uh, heroes in the centre of the ring. So I'm sure there's uh, many storyline developments that's going to uh, kind of filter through from that end segment. Now, uh, we spoke briefly about your thoughts on, on AEW. You've kind of uh, not watched it for the last two or three weeks. Now, I think there are some positives to AEW. We did mention that they have started creating a whole slew of fantastic new stars. We mentioned Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus as well. I think it's going to be a massive star in 2020s. A big, tall, muscular, veiny, tattooed dinosaur for crying out loud. What, what is there not to love? It's about <laughs> Luchasaurus. Private Party, they've been doing very well. Chris Statlander, whose gimmick is, is of, a, of an alien, but uh, she, she's a bit of a beast. She's, she's a good wrestler, got some good power moves there. MJF, Sammy Guevara, I think they've all been elevated through, uh, through AEW. I'm loving everything. I think the one thing that I'm not enjoying, or there are a couple couple of things I'm not enjoying about AEW, but Jim Ross, I think he's seen better days. And if you've heard any of his matches or read any reports about Jim Ross's commentary lately, that he's really struggling, to be honest with you. And uh, he's actually making the show, I don't know, just, just he's making so many mistakes and he's just making the show worse for his presence, to be honest with you. But uh, I don't know if you've had much experience with um, Jim Ross on AEW or read much many reports. He's certainly not the Jim Ross that we remember from the good old days, you could say. Ah, oh, definitely not. I think the most recent thing I've seen of Jim Ross was the Full Gear pay-per-view, and he constantly kept referring to it as fully loaded. Oh, and, yes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's <laughs> at least uh, maybe three times on the night itself, and then I believe on Dynamite the following Wednesday, he did it again. I was just like, oh, how? Like, how? You, you, you once upon a time were the greatest commentator on the planet you are you are what he is one of the greatest commentators of all time like without question but i think even going back to his new japan time i think people a lot of people there were saying that he just wasn't his usual self and then AEW, like from what i have watched of AEW, and then of course the stuff i've seen on social media of his various cock-ups it, he's not i don't think he's the guy to lead the line with regards to that announced team, I I think Excalibur is I think Excalibur is better than him. Um, Tony out, Shivani, out of that trio. Excalibur should be yeah, the, Tony the, Shivani the as well. They should bring maybe Jim Ross in for maybe the big matches, maybe yeah. some some big main event matches, or or have him as a backstage interview. I know we've seen him do some interviews backstage, which have been very effective and something that he's always been very good at. Kind of sit down face to face interviews with with wrestlers in the lead up to some big matches. Tape um, stuff. But, uh, yeah, but bring bring him out for the odd really big main event and and tape stuff. Uh, but keep Tony Shivani and Excalibur out there. I think that maybe that. That's what they'll try to shoehorn in over the next uh, well, six months, let's say. But um, there we go. Jim Ross. I, th I think Jim Ross is damaging the product, to be honest with you. As much as I love AEW, um, he does make me cringe a little bit with some of the weird and wonderful things he comes out with. And uh, God bless him. Um, but uh, baby face of the year for 2019 then did. So uh, some of the notable mentions. We had Luchasaurus, uh, Johnny Gargano, Cody. Yes. Uh, Keith Lee, Tyler Bate, Kenny Omega, Will Ospreay, but the winner, Babyface of the Year. Uh, quite a popular vote, um, and uh, it might not be too much of a surprise when I say the words Kofi Kingston, Babyface of the Year. So, uh, of course, we will remember that fantastic run he had in the lead-up to uh, to Kofi Mania, to WrestleMania, and back in April, and uh, Kofi Mania. Or Kofi Kingston is our Babyface of the Year. Um, Heel of the Year, uh, notable mentions of the nominees were MJF, uh, the, the Fiends, Bray Wyatt, Adam Cole, Seth Rollins, and they've actually nominated Seth Rollins before he actually turned heel, so uh, I think a lot of people thought that he was uh, healing it up even as a babyface. Uh, but our heel of the year for 2019 is Chris Jericho. And I mentioned earlier how I think this is a wonderful incarnation of Chris Jericho. Everything he's touching is uh, turning to gold. He's uh, amazing on the microphone, fantastic uh, uh, as a promo guy, and really elevating all the other individuals um, on the, the in the inner circle, in his faction, and AEW, like I say, everybody that goes into the ring with Chris Jericho come out the better for it. So, uh, And then on to our next category, Biggest Shock. 
or biggest moment of 2019. So some of the, the nominations were uh, Kenta's heel turn, uh, NXT's invasion of SmackDown on the main roster, John Moxley arriving in AEW, uh, MJF throwing in the towel, towel for Cody at, uh, at full gear, uh, Kofi Mania was another moment of the year, uh, CM Punk returning to wrestling, um, albeit uh, to the, the backstage show, and the winner of Biggest Shock and Moment of 2019 was Finn Balor's heel turn on Johnny Gargano. So uh, that was a hell of a moment we all remember very, very fondly. And we'll talk more about uh, Finn Balor and possibly uh, a cameo appearance from Johnny Gargano a bit later on in our report. Most improved wrestler for 2019. Uh, notable mentions were uh, Mustafa Ali, um, Rhea Ripley, Chad Gable. You mentioned Chad Gable earlier. Uh, Humberto Carrillo and Cody as uh, most improved wrestlers for 2019. But the winner of most improved wrestler for 2019 is Bray Wyatt. Uh, so congratulations, Bray or the Fiend. Um, but uh, obviously he's, uh, he's, he's had a resurgence, shall we say. He, he wasn't being used well for, for a, quite a long time. He made a brief comeback a year or two ago and then kind of fell, fell off the, the edge of a cliff and then he's returned with this uh, reimagining of Bray Wyatt and uh, the introduction of the Fiend's character so congratulations there and then comeback of the year for 2019 um, uh, nominations were John Moxley CM Punk Finn Balor uh, NWA as a group uh, nominated for comeback of the year and I can see why certainly with the new power show doing uh, doing wonders Tony Schiavone Tommaso Ciampa obviously coming back from his neck surgery after uh, a break of only seven months and impact wrestling a lot of people are feeling that impact wrestling has had a big resurgence this year but winner uh, for comeback of the year and uh well it's, it's bray wyatt again bray wyatt and the fiends obviously he's had a, an impact um on many people uh, certainly with the, the journey that the bray wyatt and the fiends character has had in 2019 so uh yes yeah, so some big awards there but uh, bray wyatt and the fiends seem to be uh, kind of getting nominated or uh, maybe uh, winning one or two of these awards. So, uh, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, 2019 has certainly been Bray Wyatt and the Fiends' year, then, it? I mean, when you, when, you, when you take the whole thing into consideration, like, he, he has had a tremendous year, and his comeback, you know, we knew it was coming at some point, we just didn't know what it was going to be, and then for, you know, for it to be what it ended up being, and then where it is now, what a year. Like, I, the character for me it's the, it's all about the character rather than what he does in the ring yeah, and all that kind of definitely. stuff like i love the character i love you know the the kind of i like the little things that he does um you know in regards to the, the fun house and little callbacks and all the big puppets i love the puppets i should tell you why i think it's worked though dits i think it's worked because this is from from the individual from Bray Wyatt's imagination, he's had so much input, so much yeah. creative input into this character, into the whole storyline. And it's great that he's been given the freedom to actually develop the world of the Firefly, Firefly Funhouse and develop the world of the Fiends. And I think that had he have passed this idea on to the backstage writers or on to Vince McMahon, we wouldn't have got three weeks out of this, let alone better part of nine or ten months that we have. And uh, we wouldn't have had half as much fun and half the experience that we have had with the Firefly Funhouse, with the Bray Wyatt character, with the Fiend character, and all the wonderful things that we've experienced. Um, so uh, I think it just, just proves the point that if you give the wrestlers that, that freedom, that creative freedom to kind of run with an idea and to, you know, be able to have the freedom and the confidence to be able to pass on these ideas to start off with and then to run with them um it's amazing to think you know w what they can actually achieve as individuals within the business themselves without having to rely on all these wonderful team of writers but uh testament to, to bray white is is weird and wonderful mind you could say but um there we go uh let's have a little look at uh, this week's nxt so uh, uh are you up to date with nxt Did, uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> i have to ask <laughs> but, but um, you're probably uh... more up to date than aew by the sound of it i'm uh, a week and a half behind Ooh. with NXT. <laughs> okay, but you're probably more familiar with the with the storylines and uh, what's yes, going down yes. on uh, on the USA Network as opposed to uh, on TNT. But I'm happy uh, to risk the spoilers. Well, yeah, yeah, indeed, and it was a it was a, it was an amazing show. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen this week's NXT, go out and watch it on the WWE Network. It was a fantastic episode, and it kicked off as I alluded to at the top of the show with Adam Cole versus uh, the Prince Finn Balor. Uh, for Adam Cole's NXT Championship. So what a way to kick off this week's uh, NXT. This was your typical back-and-forth NXT-type championship match. And certainly, 
what you would expect from these two world-class individuals. Uh, Bella was uh, Bella was selling his uh, a knee injury throughout this match, and it came into play when Cole avoided Bella's coup de grace, and uh, Bella's knee uh, gave way on the point of impact. Uh, Bella connects with the second coup de grace, however, but uh, before Bella could make the cover um he looks like he's, he's seen a ghost and uh shocked to see the returning johnny gargano come out and walk towards the ring this allows cole to drop bala with a with a with a low blow while the referee was distracted followed by a last shot running knee shiny wizard call it what you will and covers and uh gets the win so adam cole thanks to the distraction of johnny gargano johnny gargano coming out uh retains his championship in this very very good match so um after the match, Gargano gets into the ring with a steel chair and goes to work on Finn Balor, kind of gets him down, takes him down with a couple of steel chair shots. And, uh, yeah, lots to unpick here. Uh, I mean, from, from what I've described, it was certainly an action-packed opener, Dits. Um, a, a nice little match and a nice little return from a certain Mr. Johnny Wrestling. I'm, I'm happy that you just said Johnny Gargano is back. I've, mm. I, lo- I love Fit and well. Johnny Fit Gargano. And well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, funny old thing. He won uh, Wrestler of the Year on the Whammy Awards, ah. I believe. I believe. Uh, it's terrible if I don't know who actually <laughs> won the Iron Awards. I'm pretty sure we gave him Wrestler of the Year. Um, so it's really good to see him come back. And I cannot wait to see Bala versus Gargano. What an absolute treat mm. that is going to be for everybody. Like, I cannot wait for that. This sto- the, and the storyline itself as well. It's going to be a lot of fun, especially, you know, now that Finn Balor is a heel. So we've got that little, that nice little dynamic because we haven't seen Balor as a heel in uh, WWE um, right. up until, of course, you know, the last four or five weeks. Um, I've enjoyed the hell out of it. Everything I've seen him do has been great. And it's always been subtle as well. He's he's never, he's never kind of like hogged the spotlight with it. You know, he, he does what he needs to do and then he goes away. Like, and, and I love effective. that. Le- yeah, less is more with Finn Balor and I, I love it. So... I'm excited. I'm excited mm. to see these two clash. Definitely, definitely. And hopefully we haven't seen the last of Adam Cole and Finn Balor because it was a hell of a match. And uh, as much as I, you know, uh, crave to see it on our weekly television, um, that, that could have been a takeover match. And hopefully they'll have uh, Balor Cole part two somewhere down the line. But I'm certainly hungry for that one. Uh, and then we get an announcement that the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic will be returning in the new year. Bit. So uh, now uh, I thought that Cody Rhodes uh, mentioned or somebody mentioned, there's so many rumours going around that Cody had bought the right to the Dusty Rhodes name. But so I'm guessing not, as uh, the WWE or NXT will be using it again for another Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic. I'm a big fan of those sort of tournaments, so that's coming in 2020. Then we get to Cameron Grimes versus Kushida in the battle of uh, Cameron Grimes' adorable hats. Now, uh, for those of you that saw NXT last week or a couple of weeks ago, Kushida actually picked up and, and walked away with uh, Cameron Grimes' hat. Um, so... Um, uh, this this was probably the best outing from Kushida that I've seen since he made his debut on NXT. Uh, he's just come back following a wrist injury, of course. And uh, we're used to seeing Grimes finish off his opponents in double quick fashion in seconds, as a matter of fact. Um, and this match was an absolute brutal battle between these two. However, it was Cameron Grimes who uh, got the pinfall uh, with his trademark cave-in double foot stomp in a really, really fun match. And uh, you'll be glad to hear that Grimes left with his fancy hat so he was a happy boy uh, but let's have a look at a few more awards then did so we've got show slash pay-per-view of the decade Ooh. so uh, we'll come to uh, show a pay-per-view of the of the year a bit later but this is a uh, uh, sort of spanning 2010 through to 2019 the full 10 years so of the decade notable mentions were take over New Orleans um, and uh, I was at that one fantastic show in New Orleans uh, over WrestleMania tw- uh, 34 weekend uh, take over war games now take over war games were mentioned for uh, the 2017 2018 and 2019 war games so obviously take over war games is a, a special um, uh, takeover for many of our listeners uh, Wrestle Kingdom 9 10 11 and 12 were voted for uh, including money in the banks 2011 that was of course uh, featured John Cena versus CM Punk in that very memorable match and that was uh, following CM Punk's original pipe bomb you may remember uh, Survivor Series this year 2019 got to mention it was a very very good pay-per-view and Wrestlemania's 26 and 28 got to mention as well but the winner of 
pay-per-view show of the decade uh, was WrestleMania 30. So that was a 2014 Yeslemania, you may remember. And it was definitely um, a show filled with many, many highlights, including uh, that scene that we'll never forget uh, where Daniel Bryan um, has all 70 plus thousand people up on their feet doing the S chance when he's got the double belts. And uh, what a memorable, memorable show. And that was also the show where The Undertaker lost his <clears throat> undefeated WrestleMania streak as, as well. You may remember to Brock Lesnar, where Cesaro won the inaugural Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal and so many other highlights. And of course, Daniel Bryan had to fight his way through two matches uh, in the opening match against Triple H and then the main event against Randy Orton and Batista. But um, I would agree, WrestleMania 30, definitely show the decade uh, for myself. Uh, any thoughts on, on, on this one, Dits? Uh, I'm not surprised. WrestleMania 30 got it. Uh, like I said, so many good matches on there, especially the Daniel Bryan doubleheader, you know, starting with Triple H, which I thought was a great match. And then, of course, ending with that triple threat, which was brilliant. Uh, and a nice little smattering of great matches, you know, in between as well. But I was hoping that when, as soon as you said WrestleMania 30, I thought you were going to add one on the end of it. Uh... WrestleMania, WrestleMania 31 is my show <laughs> of the decade. It's because a good show. Yeah. It, I don't know. The, when I think of WrestleManias anyway, this is the only WrestleMania in recent memory that I remember watching it from start to finish and being hyped from start to finish. And like, and when it, it just, the crescendo of that Reigns Brock Lesnar main event, yeah. like I was on my, the edge, because at that time I hated Reigns and I loved Brock Lesnar. So seeing Lesnar just absolutely manhandle Reigns was brilliant. And then of course, the cash in. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. added to it. Like for me, 31 was unbelievable i loved wrestlemania 31 yeah, but you had uh, sting's uh, debut in wwe what he yes. did lose, but i uh, know you had the whole run in from the nwa and dx of course that was a that was a, a bit of a dream segment there fantastic um yeah but uh so many good matches uh yeah and, and of course you had that amazing rko from randy orton where yes. he, he kind of popped up from the curb stomp didn't he and uh, did an rko from out of nowhere off the curb stomp and that's still you know pops up on, on on facebook and various social media that meme will live forever um but um yes most definitely i agree with you there but wrestlemania 30 uh one uh show of the decade then match of the decade some of the matches that were, that were nominated were uh, Cole and Gargano from TakeOver 25, their classic two out of three falls match from earlier on this year. Uh, Kenny Omega versus uh, Kazuchika Okada from Wrestle Kingdom 11. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Gargano. Uh, any of their matches, uh, they had a fantastic series of three or four matches, uh, which were absolutely fantastic. Uh, Sasha Banks versus Bailey from NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 1. That was about 2015. Absolutely loved that match. Easily one of the best uh, women's matches ever. Uh, Cody versus Dustin Rose at this year's Double or Nothing. Absolutely yes. love that match. Definitely a five star classic. And uh, another five star classic, Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker at, at WrestleMania 26. Uh, but the winner uh, above all of those that were nominated was CM Punk versus John Cena from Money in the Bank 2011. So I must, I must admit, one of my favorite matches of all time. I've never been the biggest John Cena match, but uh, what, they do call him Big Match John for a reason. And when it's a big match, up against a, a capable opponent, he can certainly deliver. He's had some good, you know, four, four and a half star matches against AJ Styles. Yeah. But uh, this match against CM Punk definitely, definitely delivered. And uh, like I say, it all kind of stemmed from this pipe bomb. So it, there was this thread, there was this storyline. And of course, CM Punk won. He leapt through the crowd with the WWE Championship, kissing a, uh, blowing a kiss to Vince McMahon as he hopped into the fans, uh, never to be seen again, although he appeared on WWE TV uh, programming the following week. So uh, they could have dragged that one out a little bit longer. But uh, Love the hell out of that match, most definitely. Then rest through the decade bits, uh, notable mentions: Chris Jericho, Okada, uh, Seth Rollins, uh, Tatsuyu Nato. Nato. I, I can say his uh, surname, but uh, I've never been good with uh, Japanese Christian names. Kenny Omega, CM Punk. Uh, but we got double winners, so uh, another category with double winners: AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. So two very deserving uh, wrestlers to be crowned wrestler of the decade so congratulations to those two um brightest prospect for 2020 so looking ahead to just wrestlers that are on the cusp but uh, maybe uh, 2020 is going to be their year uh, nominations uh, or notable mentions re ripley uh, damian priest adam page luchasaurus uh, matt riddle uh, Io Shirai, Cameron Grimes, Jack Evans, and MJF were all nominated. Um, but the winner of Brightest Prospect for 2020 is Keith Lee. So Keith Lee had a fantastic November. 
was amazing in the TakeOver War Games match, was uh, really made a star of uh, to this year's Survivor Series, and he's been elevated even more in NXT since then. And uh, people think that 2020 is going to be the big man's year, but uh, are you a fan of Keith Lee? Uh, do you think 2020 is going to be his year? I am a fan of Keith Lee. Um, I, he's had, he had a very low spot, I think, in NXT. He came in like pretty hot, and then he just kind of faded to the background for a while but now you know especially with you know this whole nxt invasion and survivor series and all that kind of stuff he's out there like no there there is absolutely no way that he fades into the background again like he is what that guy is capable of doing for a man of his size like i'm probably half his size i wouldn't even be able to do a flip (laughs) like it's it's insane to me the things that this guy can do and he's a powerhouse at the same time. So you get you get the heavyweight and you get the cruiserweight, bang them into one, you've got Keith Lee. And, oh, and he's just oozing charisma as well. Yeah, he looks, absolutely. You know, he's, he's just uh, he's a fantastic wrestler. Um, a, pretty much the total package. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him um, feature in the Royal Rumble. I think that would be a perfect cameo spot for, a, for an NXT uh, wrestler to come up and uh, show us what they're worth on the Royal Rumble one day. Be, you know, the size that he is, I reckon he might get a few eliminations if he is featured in the Royal Rumble. But uh, let's have a look at uh, promotion of the year for 2019 and so notable mentions were wwe aw new japan uh, nwa impact wrestling progress wrestling and iwe uk that's uh, uh wrestling promotion out of essex but the winner nxt of course it had to be um i think a lot of people feared that when they went to two hours they might be more diluted, might be yeah. kind of spread thin, uh, that they might not have, the, they've obviously got the, the, the depth of roster there, but they might not use the roster, that they were going to be dabbled with by Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn, but no, it was kind of left to uh, Triple H and Co backstage NXT to look after it and uh, kind of turn what was a, an amazing one hour into an incredible two hour show on a weekly basis. And I think that it's just got better and better every single week and uh, yeah, as good as it was, as one hour, I think it's, it's doubled uh, the enjoyment for two hours. But uh, congratulations to NXT. They're very, very deserving. But uh, speaking of NXT, let's get on to part two of our NXT review. Uh, just to quickly recap some of the other happenings, uh, we saw the ever impressive Io Shirai. She defeated uh, Santana Garrett with her trademark moonsault. And it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Io didn't feature in the Female of the Year awards a bit later on. Uh, then we saw another impressive battle between Pete Dunne and Travis Banks uh, of uh, NXT UK fame, of course, with uh, Pete Dunne eventually putting the match away with, uh, with an avalanche X-Plex, followed by an, uh, <laughs> a bitter end for the victory for the Bruiserweight there. Then it was time for our main event, uh, a two-time NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler going up against Rhea Ripley. So this has had a bit of a bit of a hype and a bit of a build over the last few weeks, couple of months, you could say. Um, I think uh, Rhea Ripley and Shayna had a face-off on the, the first two-hour live show back in October. Um, now Rhea was massively, massively over with the fans here. Nobody was cheering Shayna as she made her entrance. And this match was at fever pitch from the off. The fans were massively behind this. Uh, uh, Jessamyn Duke and Rooney. <coughs> Shafir, they got involved, uh, but they were soon sent to the back by the referee. Uh, Ripley even had a visual pinfall over the champion from a riptide, but the referee was knocked out in the corner and uh, from an earlier spot. Ripley kicks out of a DDT onto a steel chair with the referee making a miraculous recovery to count Ripley's uh, shoulders, but only for a two count. Baszler applies a Carafluda uh, sleeper hold, Carafluda clutch, uh, with Ripley refusing to give in and recovers to apply imp- uh, apply her inverted clover leaf, which always looks very impressive. Uh, both women then battle it out on the top turnbuckle, with Rhea somehow managing to drop Baszler with an avalanche riptide from the top rope, from the top turnbuckle. Ripley covers and the referee counts one, two, three. We have a new NXT women's champion in the form of Rhea Ripley. So the, the ring then fills up with, with fans. It fills up with wrestlers all wanting to celebrate and uh, put uh, Rhea on their shoulders to celebrate this amazing victory. Um, this this show just was capped off brilliantly and uh, proven that Rhea Ripley 
it is an amazing wrestler, but very, very popular with the fans. And, and she is the first ever um, NXT UK Women's Champion and NXT Women's Champion combined. So the first person to win both championships on the kind of dual NXT brands, you could say. And uh, after an amazing November that Rhea Ripley has, she caps it off with a, with an early Christmas present in December by becoming the NXT Women's Champion. So what were your thoughts on this? I know you're a fan of Rhea Ripley. Uh, you must be uh, really, really over the moon for her. And it was a good match. And the fans, I say they were they were allowed to jump in the ring and celebrate with the rest of us. It was a great occasion. Yeah, I mean, I kind of lived this match through um, somebody who's been on this show quite recently, Josh Robinson. He did a, a live reaction. Of course, Rhea uh, is from Adelaide, which is just down the road from Josh. So I watched his reaction video. I could kind of hear what was going on in the background. It sounded incredible. That whole ending sounded incredible. It looked like, you know, Rhea was going to tap or pass out, you know, and of course then it built and then the rip tied off the top and she got the win. And it, it was like it sounded incredible. I mean, I watched the um, the the aftermath of it with the fans getting in and you know Rhea getting the love in the crowd and all that love. I, I've I've never seen anything like that before. Um, as far as I'm aware, you know, I've seen obviously wrestlers coming in and congrats. I think remember Sami Zayn when he won the NXT Championship, wrestlers swarmed the ring. But this time seeing like fans come in, it was that was something else. Like if you want to make Rhea look like a big deal. This is how you do it. Like, oh, she yeah. looks like an absolute star coming out of this. And nothing can be taken away from Shane or Isa. Like, like, 600 plus days as NXT Women's Champion. I personally have loved Shayna's reign. Should it have ended a little bit earlier? You know, perhaps. But every, every time she retained, I wasn't mad about it. Like, I was happy for her to continue. You know, she was the one that elevated that women's division you know everyone she was bringing everybody up to her level you know she was like the, the final boss of the nxt women's division and we've had somebody come through now to take the title off her and i'm happy so happy that it's that is rhea ripley because that sets up so much stuff going forward i'm looking to what will inevitably be at some point in 2020 rhea ripley versus Arguably the best wrestler on the planet, never mind female, best wrestler on the planet, Io Shirai. Oh, yeah. I was thinking the same. Yeah, that would be a, an awesome match. Um, but uh, I reckon this is a perfect opportunity for them to move uh, Shayna onto either Raw or SmackDown so that she can be featured against a, a fresh set of opponents and uh, leave the field open for Rhea Ripley to kind of really stake her claim as a, as a you know, a, a fantastic NXT champion to see how long she can hold the championship for. But um, yeah, really, really pleased for Rhea Ripley. And, and once again, we, we spoke about AEW making stars. NXT have made a star of Rhea Ripley. You could say she's kind of homegrown. She may have spent a year or two uh, on the independence in Australia before coming over to uh, the USA. We saw in the in the first of a May Young Classic and the second May Young Classic. Um, the first time round, you may remember she was the kind of the girl next door Rhea Ripley. Then twelve months later, she had a transformation into this punk, edgy kind of uh, yeah. The Rhea Ripley we're more familiar with nowadays, but uh, uh, a great character, massively over with the fans. And uh, to think she's only twenty three years old, it's scary to think how I good know. she's going to be in a year or two, three, four, five years from now. Uh, but there we go big things in store for her but uh, let's uh, talk through our final awards of uh, of the year so tag team of the year for 2019 uh, notable mentions this were uh, Undisputed Era, so Undisputed Era didn't win this, but uh, uh, the Young Bucks were also nominated, Private Party, the Viking Raiders were nominated, LAX or Santana and Ortiz as they're uh, now uh, more commonly known as in AEW, uh, the Kabuki Warriors were nominated, New Day and the Bone Brothers, I think the Bone Brothers are uh, a UK independent tag team, but uh, uh, the winner of Tag Team of the Year is the Lucha Brothers, so the Lucha Brothers, Pentagon Jr and uh, Ray Phoenix have been set Setting, uh, yeah, setting kind of new standards of tag team wrestling over the last few years, and uh, their the match this week against Kenny Omega and Adam Page was phenomenal. Um, right, so show and pay per view of 2019. We, we spoke about uh, show and pay per view of the decade earlier, but for 2019, the, the nominees were AEW Double or Nothing, fantastic show uh, presented yeah. by uh, All Elite Wrestling there. 
um, uh, IWE UK's Road to Glory, uh, TakeOver War Games 2019 was also nominated, Survivor Series was nominated, and uh, NXT TakeOver Cardiff, which was a show that both you and I were at, and uh, AEW Full Gear was nominated, but the winner of a show pay-per-view of 2019 was NXT TakeOver New York, so that was obviously took place over WrestleMania weekend, and you had the, the first uh, match between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole, where Gargano won his first NXT <coughs> Championship, that was when the, the title was vacated previously uh, from an injured Tommaso Ciampa and uh, Gargano won uh, the, the, the title. Uh, Adam Cole won the, the, the rematch, the two out of three falls match of the next takeover, but that was uh, Johnny Gargano's moment in New York. Uh, match of the year for 2019. Uh, let's see, you've got notable mentions Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano at uh, TakeOver New York, we've just mentioned that one and at TakeOver 25 with their two out of three falls match, so uh, two matches there from Gargano and Adam <coughs> Cole Kenny Omega versus John Moxley, their unsanctioned lights out match from Full Gear uh, Pete Dunne versus Adam Cole from Survivor Series, which is uh, certainly one of my highlights of the year, one of my matches of the year okay. Will Ospreay versus Taga T Takagi, I told you I wasn't very good with Japanese <laughs> names, it's not going to get any better I tell you, I, when, I, when I cover um, Wrestle Kingdom in January, it's going to be a nightmare I'll have to rely heavily on my, my guest host then, uh, and uh, Cody versus Dustin was also nominated from uh, Double or Nothing back in May of course, but the winner and I think we'll both be pleased to hear this was Tyler Bates versus Walter from NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff we were both yes. there, it was a, an epic 44 minute uh, match and uh, Tyler Bates just wow what a man what a what a legend he was in that match took all the punishment came back gave some uh, but uh, Walter the big man um, he may not be able to uh, to hang on to his belt um, uh, because uh, of cars getting broken into but he certainly hung on to uh, to the championship on that occasion and uh, delivered when it mattered so uh, congratulations to those two, those two a fantastic match and a match because I was there that will live with me forever. A uh, really memorable match. And um, yeah, female wrestler of the year. That's notable mentions. Um, God, another Japanese wrestler. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> a a, a Rishi Hoshizaki, or I think that was it anyway. If it I'm wasn't, convinced. <laughs> there we go. Yes, uh, <laughs> you can't see what's in front of me. So uh, there we go. <laughs> Victoria Adams, uh, Rhea Ripley, Io Shirai, and Shayna Baszler were uh, were uh, mentioned. So uh, they didn't win, uh, but we have double winners, and uh, the the double winners, the tandem winners of female wrestler of 2019 were Tessa Blanchard of Impact Wrestling, of course, and Becky Lynch. So we're uh, some big fans of Tessa and uh, Becky Lynch uh, of the Wrestling Majors podcast. So congratulations to those two. And Tessa, of course, um, you know, got a big match coming up on January. Callahan for Sammy's Impact World Championship. So uh, this will be the first opportunity for a female wrestler to go up against a, uh, a male wrestler for a world championship uh, on a kind of a major company. So uh, Impact kind of leading the way there with a bit of intergender wrestling and uh, male wrestler of the year. So this is our final award uh, for this show, male wrestler of the year. Uh, notable mentions, uh, nominations, Bray Wyatt slash The Fiend were nominated, Kenny Omega, uh, Walter, uh, Pac, uh, Bob Sharp, Kick, uh, Kofi Kingston, Pete Dunne, uh, Kazuchika Okada, Chris Jericho and Roderick Strong were all nominated. But there can be only one winner. And so that winner of Wrestler of the Year, Male Wrestler of the Year, goes to Adam Cole Bay Bay. So congratulations to the leader of the Undisputed Era. He's had an amazing year. Um, and like I say, he had them uh, epic series of matches with Johnny Gargano, um, uh, TakeOver New York and TakeOver 25, where he won the championship in that epic two out of three falls uh, match. Uh, it was, I think it was three different stipulations. And that final one was a kind of like that, that weird, wild steel cage match with weapons and tables and all sorts but uh, very memorable and he's hung on to the championship and he's really kind of elevated himself to you know being a, a very credible NXT champion and definitely worthy of being a wrestler of the year male wrestler of the year and looks like he had a, a fantastic outing at this year's Survivor Series beating Pete Dunne in, in match of the night as far as I'm concerned but uh, definitely a worthy winner male wrestler of the year Adam Cole uh, Ditch your thoughts on Adam Cole um, as our male wrestler of the year I I I Look back to my my own end of year awards, and it was it was down to Adam Cole or Johnny Gargano. Funny old thing, they were linked um, for a good part of the year. Um, it's it's one of those things. It could have gone either way for my awards, but Adam Cole is superstar of the year, well, wrestler, male wrestler of the year. Um, 
hardly surprising. What an absolutely incredible year. Like he's been he, he's if he wasn't a superstar before, he is now. Like everybody knows exactly who Adam Cole is, the presentation of him, his 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 ability as a wrestler itself, his promo ability, just everything about it has been great. And the fact that, you know, he's had it's like it's like, it's not been a forgetful NXT title run. It's been every single match that he's had that's been for that title has been great. And then you take the NXT invasion of the main the main roster into uh, into account as well. Yeah, you know, he, he had led the fantastic. charge. Yeah. yeah, he led the charge, had a great match against Daniel Bryan on that first um, invasion night. And it, we, we as casual, uh, not casual, we as the hardcore fan base, inverted commas, we know exactly who Adam Cole is. But taking him out onto SmackDown, onto that Fox, you know, presentation, having that match against Daniel Bryan, the casuals then got to know exactly who Adam Cole was and what more could he have done? And then you throw Survivor Series into the mix as well against yeah. Pete Dunne. Like you said it yourself, one of your, most, one of your favorite matches of the year, one of my favorite matches of the year. Same could be said for a lot of people. Like Definitely. Adam Cole, what an absolutely amazing year. And I would be very, very surprised if he's not in contention for male wrestler of the year again in 2020, he'd be very, very surprised. Definitely, definitely. Well, having gone through all of these awards, it's definitely kind of reminded me of what a, what a wonderful year 2019 has been uh, as a wrestling fan. I mean, at the very beginning of the year, we were kind of greeted with the introduction, with the announcement of AEW, the, the new kind of wrestling promotion that was going to be kind of hitting our screens and hitting the arenas in 2019. And it did. Its first show was Double or Nothing in May. And of course, uh, uh, it's been no looking back since then. They've got their weekly TV show. So with AEW, bringing that extra element of competition, I think that it's really elevated, uh, you know, the, the performance level of NXT and WWE as a whole. It's really been that uh, missing link, that missing sense of competition that WWE or the wrestling world has been uh, kind of missing for 18 years since WCW went out uh, of business. But um, it's been a wonderful year as a, to, to be a wrestling fan. I know we say it every time we get together and every time we do a podcast, but, uh, you know, we're so lucky to be wrestling fans in this era with so much uh, wrestling, so many options, so, so much variety and if you don't like one promotion then that's fine you've got another 20 to choose from but yeah. uh, would you echo my sentiment there Dits? Uh, Dits? yeah absolutely it's been it's been a weird year for wrestling to be honest like there's so many just crazy things that have happened though you if you if you were to speak to ourselves in 2018 like a lot of it you wouldn't have guessed you know <laughs> having this direct competition with wwe with AEW, like I never would have thought, especially on TNT, you know, echoing the whole, you know, Monday Night Wars thing, you know, and obviously now it's on a Wednesday, but that nobody expected that impacts, you know, uh, they've been great for a while, but they seem to have had this, you know, fantastic resurgence, mm. the comeback of NWA. Yeah. Uh, like there's just so much that has happened throughout the year. That We've been headlining WrestleMania for the first time. Uh, yes, yeah, st exactly. Stuff like that, you know, it, I there's so many great moments. Like I mean, some people probably look back and go, you know, more for WWE that it wasn't their strongest year. But when you really think about it, and exactly what you said, it doesn't matter that WWE had a bad year because you have NWA, you have Impact, you have AEW. Like, and you, I mean, I know obviously NXT is part of WWE, but you have NXT. Like, it's the alternative within the company. Uh, there's just so many promotions in 2019. I think wrestling is thriving um, at the moment in 2019. So I'm hoping that carries on into 2020 because there's so much more to come and so much more to enjoy. You know, AEW is going to continue uh, to do its thing. Impact will, you know, hopefully, you know, maintain its momentum. NWA will continue um, to smash it. You know, I don't know one person that has said a bad thing about NWA power, to Very be completely true. honest. Yeah. I, I honestly haven't. When you look at Twitter and well, wrestling Twitter and people's timelines and stuff like that, everything is aimed at, ah, oh, you know, WWE sucks or AEW sucks. Never seen NWA in there. Never seen them in the conversation. So yeah. um, 2020 is going to be really, really exciting, but it's only going to be exciting because of how good 2019 was. Most definitely. It's been a fantastic year and uh, roll on uh, 2020, roll on the new decade and what everything that it has to offer. But uh, Dits, I want to thank you for coming on board and helping us out with this special episode of Wrestling Jonas, our end of year, our end of decade awards. Uh, so thank you, my friend. Uh, can't wait to have you back on the podcast again very soon. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very, very much for having me.
No, you're very welcome. So uh, that draws uh, an end to uh, this. Uh, it's not quite our last episode of 2019. We've still got the Cha Cha Charlie episode that's dropping on the 26th. So please make sure that you listen to that and share it and tell your friends. Uh, so please keep it tuned to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast for all of your weekly NXT and AW updates, of course, uh, regular WWE and AEW pay-per-view uh, reviews and so much more, including the exclusive interviews uh, like the Cha Cha Charlie interview that I mentioned and uh, Big F and Joe coming up on the 2nd of January, of course. And if you enjoyed listening to the Wrestling with Jonas podcast, please spread the word, tell your friends and tell your family. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and uh, so that you don't miss out on a single episode. In the meantime, uh, have a, a very Merry Christmas to all of my listeners out there. Uh, listeners as well uh, thank you for your support in 2019 hope you all have a, a wonderful new year and uh, we look forward to speaking to you all again very very soon thanks for listening